You're probably wondering how a filament that's used by literally everybody is going to be replaced. And well, good thing for you because you're about to find out. For the past, like, ever, people have been turning to PLA as their main form of filament they use, especially when they're a beginner. And I can't blame them because PLA is probably one of the best beginner filaments out there because there hasn't been really anything to compete with it. But a new filament was just released a few months ago and I've been really liking it and I think it could be a good replacement for PLA and you're about to find out why that is. But first, what are the main things that makes PLA so popular? Well, it's a combination of a lot of different things. PLA is super cheap, it's readily available, easy to print, and you can get it in almost any color that you can think of. This means that you can get a good usable filament for a relatively low price in literally any color you want. And it's also so readily available that stores like Micro Center have like an entire wall full of this filament. PLA is also so incredibly widespread that they have like specialty ones like silk, metal looking ones, carbon fiber filled, dual extrusion, tri-extrusion, you can find literally anything in PLA. So with all of these facts, it should be the best beginner filament and the best filament for a lot of people because of how cheap it is and easy to print with. All you literally have to do is load it up into your printer and hit print. Literally anybody's printer out there can probably print this because it prints at 190 Celsius to about 220 degrees Celsius which is kind of like a baseline. If your printer can't print that, then there's really no other options for filament you can print with. So if someone was to come up to me and ask what my favorite filament is and what I would recommend for someone, for the longest time, I definitely would have agreed with everybody else and just said PLA until a few months ago. PLA's biggest downfall is that it's really good for things that need to look good, but it is not good for anything that needs to be under any physical stress. PLA it can be pretty brittle and it also doesn't have great layer adhesion, so literally any time it's under really any stress, the prints will probably break. Another one of the downsides is that while it's really great that it can print at a super low temperature, that also presents a downside when you need this thing to be outside or in any warm space. PLA has such a low melting temperature that if you so much as look at it wrong, it'll start to warp and kind of melt and just deform your prints, so you literally have to have it in a cool place at all time. So with PLA and its kind of meh mechanical properties, you're basically limited to only prints that'll be inside and basically are only there for appearance like small toys or something that's gonna shit, sit on your shelf as a display piece. So what are your other options for a filament that you can use if you need something to hold up under some stress or if you need something to be outside in a hot car or anywhere outside? Well, there's another filament and it's called ABS and I have zero clue what ABS stands for, but I do know that it's the same material that Legos are made of. ABS has probably been out as long as PLA, if not longer, but it offers some better physical properties and has about the same price. ABS comes in tons of colors, it has a ton of manufacturers and it's very widespread and available, all while being fairly cheap, and it offers higher heat resistance and a few better mechanical properties. But you probably like breathing. But if you love sucking in O2 like I do, then ABS probably is not the filament for you because it produces some pretty toxic and stinky fumes. And while there are solutions to this, like getting an enclosure or having a well-ventilated area, I personally just don't like printing in ABS because it also warps a ton and is kind of hard to print with. So I just don't think it's worth it because the mechanical properties aren't that much better than that of PLA. So I've been sticking to PLA for the past like seven years. And even with an enclosure and a well ventilated area, sometimes when I'm printing ABS, I still get a headache and I just don't really find it worth it because I can just print the same thing in PLA and I don't really print too many things that need to be outdoors. If I did need to print a ton of stuff outdoors, then I would probably turn to ASA because this is a great filament. It's fairly cheap, easy to print with, but you also need an enclosure and those same stinky fumes are gonna be produced. At this point, I've still got you wondering, so what is this next big filament that I have to start using? Well, let me introduce you to a little something I like to call PETG. And no, I'm not a freak, so I'm not gonna call it PETG. You're probably thinking now, well, PETG has been out forever, just like all of the other filaments that I've been talking about. And you're right, but there's a new kind of PETG that is gonna take over the 3D printing market. And I'm not talking about no normal PETG, 
I'm talking about P-E-T-G-H-F. That stands for high flow, baby. So let me tell you why P-E-T-G-H-F is going to be the next big thing in the 3D printing space. And before you get those crusty Cheeto fingers typing away at your keyboard telling me that this is an ad, it's not. I'm not that popular. But it does in fact flatter me if you think this is a paid video. And yes, the company has sent me filament before and they have sent me printers as well, but I'm not paid by them to say any of this, nor did they instruct me to make this video or even give me the idea for this video. This is all my own thoughts. PETG has been around forever now and people love it in its non high flowified form but it just got even better being high flowified. Because you see the high flowification doesn't just make it be able to print faster, but it also has some amazing properties that you're gonna wanna hear. PETG is great because it has a pretty good layer adhesion, pretty high temperature resistance, and it's fairly inexpensive. But there are some major downsides. It warps fairly easily and it's a little bit difficult to print, Plus, you need to print with a glue stick if you're printing on PEI because you'll have a layer adhesion that you can't get off and it'll just tear apart your bed. Besides the fact that this filament doesn't produce many fumes, well, at least ones that I can smell, it sounds a lot like ABS, right? Well, what if I told you that PETG High Flow fixes all of these pesky little problems and makes printing PETG super easy and makes it the best beginner filament out there. First off, it has greater durability and toughness than that of PLA, so it's better for prints that are going to be outside or under a lot of stress. Before I get flamed in the comments, I want to clarify why I'm considering PETG better than PLA. While technically the numbers are better for PLA, it is much, much more brittle, meaning it's just going to snap when it bends. That's what happens with a lot of the prints and the layer adhesion isn't very good. PETG on the other hand, bends and is a lot more flexible and doesn't just snap. That's why it is a lot better than PLA. Normal PETG has to be printed significantly slower than that of PLA, but HF doesn't stand for nothing. That's right, you can print PETG just as fast as you can PLA, and you can still get those silky smooth layers without any oozing or clumping. PLA can't be used for basically any print outside like I was saying before, but guess what? PETG HF can. PETG HF has a greater resistance to water, UV, and temperature, making it a great filament to be used outside. About three months ago, I printed out a license plate holder for the front of my 1994 Pontiac Firebird in some PETG high flow. And even over the past three months, which was summer, so it was super hot outside, it held up like a charm. And I don't even keep this car in a garage, I keep it outside so it was exposed to the heat and all the elements and it still held up perfectly fine. One of the main and almost only downsides I can think about of this filament is just like normal PETG, it's hygroscopic so you need to dry it before printing. But like a bunch of printers like the FL Sun S1 with having a built in filament dryer, uh, this isn't that much of a problem, plus filament dryers aren't too expensive. I personally use one from EOBOSS. The PETG high flow I've been personally referring to this entire video is that from Bamboo Lab. They did send me some a while ago. No, they did not tell me to make this video or do anything with it. They just sent me some to try and I've really liked it. I'm sure there are a ton of manufacturers out there who already make something similar, but I think Bamboo Labs is one of the best out there that I've tried. One of the other downsides of this filament is that there's only 14 colors currently available on Bamboo Labs website. However, if a ton of people buy this filament, then I'm sure they'll start making tons of colors just like PLA because I'm sure PLA only started with a few colors as well. Plus, it's basically the same price as PLA, so you're not really losing out in any aspect. You're actually just gaining higher temperature, water, UV resistance, and it's the same amount of ease to print with. You literally just load it up into your printer and hit print just like you would with a normal roll of PLA. I would recommend putting down a layer of glue because it still is PETG which bonds really well with PEI. So with all of its advantages and very little downsides, why would you use anything else? I think that this can and should become the next big filament for the 3D printing community, especially for beginners because it offers better mechanical properties and lets the beginners see what 3D printing can actually do. PLA has been great for a long time, but I think that its reign is over. So what do you guys think? Do you think PLA is now obsolete and PETG High Flow will take over? 
or do you think that PLA will continue its reign and nothing will be able to dethrone it? Because I've given you my two cents, so let me know what you think down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can use my affiliate link for the filament. Once again, it's not sponsored, but you can use my affiliate link to support the channel and help me grow.